Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Carpo Gaming and another Division 2 Warlords of New York video. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it is Patch Notes time. The new update, Title Update 9, will be arriving tomorrow and with it comes a ton of new changes, exotic reconfigurations, and a whole lot more. So, in this video, we are going to be going over all of the new title update 9 patch notes now as always I'll be leaving a link down below so you can check out these lovely patch notes yourself as well as I'll be time stamping it so you can jump right into the section that you would like to see so let's get started now the title update 9 should be approximately around 10 gigabytes now the new feature exotic reconfiguration now you will be able to upgrade exotic items to level 30 that's right the old ones that you had in your inventory can now finally be upgraded as well as reroll their attributes with the new reconfiguration system available in the crafting bench next up we have gear balance exotic talents and named items first up we have the exotic Sawyer knee packs which have been reworked they can now be staggered by explosions, increase total weapon damage by 3% each second you are not moving, stacks up to times 10 and stacks are lost when moving. This exotic only provides defense attributes and no brand bonus so now has the potential for high damage and makes it appealing to both red and blue bill developer comment. The old version didn't provide enough engaging gameplay. This change should help with that. Next up we have the Imperial Dynasty. With the Imperial Dynasty, it now is reworked. Now, it's reduced cooldown to 35 seconds, down from 40, developer comment. This buff is better to compensate for the lack of brand bonus. Next up, Dodge City Gunslinger. Reduced charge time from 30 seconds from 50 seconds, developer comment. This buff is to better compensate for the lack of brand bonus. Next up, we have the Diamond Bag, which has been reworked as well. Now, it grants all shots guaranteed crits for 5 seconds after hitting a mark. Developer comment, the diamond pack is underperforming and this change should make the bonus a bit more exciting. <laughs> Next up we have the Merciless Ruthless buff. Explosion damage increased up to 1200% up from 900%. Developer comment, explosion damage doesn't scale with crit stat so we boost it to compensate. Next up, the Lady Death no longer enhanced turret skills. The Bullet King base damage is now the same as the non-exotic LMG version and the exotic attribute roll quality. All exotics will now roll at the highest possible minimum roll regardless of the difficulty they are obtained in so that that could be a lot interesting right there also excited items can still roll higher than the minimum but minimum rolls are now higher next up we have talents tag team is reworked that's right the last enemy you have damaged with a skill is marked dealing a weapon damage to that enemy consumes the mark to reduce active cooldowns by six seconds cooldown four seconds this does not consume a mark if no skill is on cooldown also reassign buff killing an enemy adds one round to random special ammo into your sidearm also reduce the cooldown to 15 seconds down from 20 seconds next up tamper proof has been reworked enemies that walk within three meters of your hive toward or remote post or shot arm time two seconds increase cooldown per skill to 10 seconds up from five seconds and last but not least empathetic resolve buff repairing an ally increases their total weapon and skill damage by three to fifteen percent for 20 seconds up from 10 seconds and one to seven percent itself developer comment currently it is difficult to keep a high uptime in four-man content as non-tank players try to be as safe as possible and NPCs has higher lethality so chip damage is less frequent next up creeping death when you apply a status effect it is also applied to all enemies within eight meters up from five meters of your target and also reduce cooldown from 15 seconds down from 20 seconds and overcharge channels now properly state they don't work in pvp next up we have named items yeah we knew this was coming yeah here are the changes to the named items contractor gloves damage to armor lower to eight percent out 
Firm handshake status effect increased to 50%. Mm -hmm. Ammo dump now correctly rolls two additional attributes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Claws out now correctly has a skill timer core attribute roll. Now correctly rolls an attribute in addition to pistol damage and melee damage. Melee damage increased to 400%. Pretty good. Fox Prayer damage to out of cover lower to 8%. Not bad of a nerve, not too bad. The Hollow Man damage to help lowered to 10%. Ouch. Punch Drunk cash out damage increased to 20%. Alright. And we have Standoff. Remove perfectly rooted talent. Ouch. Next up we have weapons, the assault rifles. Increase maximum roll of damage to health to 21%. Now players on Stadia will not see this be displayed correctly and instead see an increase to damage to health and other weapon types. This is a UI issue only and will be fixed with the next client update. Next up everybody, we have gear sets. True Patriot, that's right, white buff armor repair lower to 2% slash 3% once every second. Next up we have main missions. Pentagon and DARPA Research Lab. Lower difficulty to be more on par with other missions. Liberty Island, lower difficulty to be on par with other missions. Wall Street, reduce health and damage to the APC. Standard taken NPC composition have been readjusted. Next up, AI and NPCs. Signature weapon against named NPCs. Slightly increased damage signature weapon deals to named enemies. Elite NPCs damage against player skills. Reduce damage elite NPCs deal to player skills and tank sprint speed reduce sprint speed of tank archetype from all hostile factions so you should see a difference when those big guys are rushing your skills that you throw down next up npc shotguns reduce damage of all npc shotguns adjusted range of some npc shotguns including shotguns used by black tux rushers status effects reducing duration of poison and cleaners napalm and snare when apply to players. Special ammo scaling. Any NPCs with special ammo has the same UI indication as from the special ammo directive. Examples of who this affects. Outcasts who pick up special ammo boxes deployed by their support archetype. Bounties who spawn with more special ammo. Next up rogue agents. Significantly reduce the armor of dynamically spawning rogue agents. To prevent this from being too large of a nerf, 3 to 4 player co-op uh, rogue agent can spawn with an armor kit which can repair them up to 70%. Now they slightly reduce the damage output of dynamically spawning rogue agents. Next up we have NPC buff allies ability change. Now previously certain bosses and bounties would magically overheal themselves and their fire team. This buff allies ability lack clear messaging so it has been replaced with the leader overheal ability. This is the same ability that the Rikers leader archetype has. Once the boss leader is killed all their friendly lost their overheal. No, the UI indication of pulsating circles inward hour in their nameplate signals when this ability is active. So a nice ability change right there. Next up under loots and rewards. Increase drop of power exotics to always be of the highest tier giving the highest minimum rows. That's kind of weird. The highest minimum rows. Also added operation dark added raid gear. Set chest and backpack items to the general loot pool making them available outside of operation dark hours. That's plus. Lower number of exotic components awarded from exotic deconstruction to match the cost of exotic reconfiguration. So you probably want to kind of crush some of those exotics right now for those explain if you got them. Next up, lower the conflict XP amount from PvP weekly projects to match the required XP for one conflict level. And then under blueprints, everybody. Combine all skill mod blueprints of different qualities into a single blueprint per skill scaling quality with that of the crafting bitch. Added skill mod blueprints of the skill introduced in Warlords of New York. Also added blueprints from the general blueprint pool for the first time weekly completion rewards of invaded missions. Added blueprints from the general blueprints pool of rewards of daily projects. Under skills, the sharpshooter tactician skill base radius has been increased to 50 meters and scoping is now enabled when using a shield skill. Under bug fixes. 
Under gear and skill, fix several magazine attachments not matching their weapon and are clipping with their models. Fix several scopes being offset on multiple weapons. Fix the mission animation when picking up the skill variant after defeating the final boss in the tomb's main mission. Fix the issue causing deployable skills not to refresh their duration when receiving the artificial hive buff. Fix the issue causing some items created before Warlords do not to have wrong attribute values. Fix the issue causing the glass cannon gear talent to amplify all healing received. Fix the talent of the perfectly overflowing talent to correctly state that it increases the base magazine capacity at the third reload from empty. Fix the text of the coast to go back talent on in hand to correctly state that the buff triggers when the grenade is thrown. Fix the issue causing cards to not correctly flip when having the poker face backpack talent of the aces and eight gear set equipped. Fix the issue causing the nemesis exotic to not trigger the focus gear talent when scoped. Also, fix the issue causing the Muffle Flash VFX to be missing for the Lady Death Exotic Sub Machine Gun. Fix the issue causing agents to get stuck on slopes and stairs when having a shield equipped and moving diagonally. Fix the issue causing the Demolisher Firefly to sometimes target and destroy friendly decoys. Also, fix the issue causing the sniper tour to have an odd behavior when shooting at enemy NPCs with shields. Fix several issues causing attachments being misplaced on the Carnage and the what I call it the Iwijiwi weapons. That's the, the gun that they nerfed, the original OP, you know, LMG. Fix the text for the booster hive to now correctly state that it delivers a stimulus to nearby allies that increases their weapon damage and handling. Fix the issue causing players to be unable to purchase the holster intel Go West Young Agent at Anaya. Fix the issue causing the plague of the outcast debuff of the pestilence to transfer the lower amount of stacks under certain circumstances. And fix the issue that allowed wildlife to count towards the technician and flamethrower special field research. Be nice to the animals, y'all. Yeah. Next up, we have gameplay. Under gameplay, fix the issue causing players to be unable to progress to a higher world tier when completing any required stronghold in another player session after leaving that session. So this was a bug that was originally fixed, then was reintroduced, and now it's being fixed. Hopefully, it's fixed. Next up, fix the issue causing the uh, violent and diligent bounty to not be completable when it spawns at certain location. Fix the issue that caused players to not gain any seasonal XP when disconnecting or crashing, requiring an additional restart of the game. Fix the issue causing players to be unable to reach the Angel of Mercy contaminated area. Fix the issue causing low level agents to deal higher than intended melee damage while in co-op with the player at level 40. Fix the issue causing players to be able to change global difficulty when in a party with players without Warlords of New York below level 40. Fix the issue that allowed a party leader to invite crossplay players into the group while other party members had crossplay turned off. This would cause the non-crossplay players to be kicked off the group. You will now no longer be able to invite crossplay players into the group if any group member has deactivated crossplay. Next up, we have fixed an issue that could cause odd grouping behavior when a non Warlords of New York player interacted with the helicopter pilot in Washington to transfer to New York and also fixed the issue causing specialization skill mods to not scale correctly at level 40, fix the issue causing global events NPC challenges to not count for the player landing the killing blow, and also fix the issue causing players to be able to gain the armor breaking distinction commendation under certain circumstances. Next up, we have UI. Now, under UI, fix misleading GPUs pointing towards the SHG tech positioning in the Civic Center area. Fix the issue causing control points to alert level to remain after a player captured a control point in New York. Fix the issue causing a gear score to be displayed when creating a raid group at Warlords of New York maximum level. Fix the issue causing the directives tutorial to not trigger after finishing the Liberty Island main mission and activating Kenner's watch. Fix the issue causing the opt-in to participate message to show in the rewards and challenge menu when performing a server transfer despite the event being already active. Also fix the issue causing the 
League Active started celebration and League Active time trial objective to appear when starting a time trial mission on any difficulty. Fix the issue causing the buff icon after using armor kit with the system corruption gear set to disappear before its visual timer was finished. Fix the issue causing the Kenner Watch tutorial to trigger on subsequent characters. Fix the issue causing the UI to enlarge when Pressing the I key when browsing an inventory section through an item. Fix the issue causing non-functional apparel menu to remain on screen when exiting apparel emotes or weapon skins while holding option button on any controller. Fix the issue causing non-functionality inventory UI to remain on screen when accessing and exiting the store menu through a lootable item. Fix missing VFX or completing a role agent encounter. Fix the issue, the Expedition Matchmaking UI element to be available for Warlords of New York players that have not reached level 40 yet. Fix visual for some modding icons in the weapon modding screen. Fix the issue causing the incorrect message you left the group to repeat when playing when trying to invite a player on another platform when you have crossplay disabled on Stadia or PC. Okay. Uh, fix the text of the shield skills to correctly reflect that they also scale with the blue defensive core attributes. Fix the issue causing the please wait message to remain on the screen when the player quickly sells and buys back any item from the vendor menu. And fix the issue causing Warlords of New York skills to have placeholder render and missing stats on the skills overview page of the quarter master menu. Next up under localization. Fix missing Italian, Spanish, and Arabic voice translation of cinematics. Fix the issue causing the error text can't invite players that have not started the expansion going out of border for certain languages. Under audio, fix the issue causing the voice over to overlap if the player goes through the Kenner's Watch tutorial too quickly. Next up under missions. Fix the issue causing outcast support NPCs to remain stuck in spawn area in the Federal Emergency Bunker main mission on challenging difficulty. Fix the issue causing too many outcast tanks to spawn at the same time during the Stranded Tanker main mission. Fix the issue causing the main objective to not update if the agent did not interact with the already open elevator door when entering the Pentagon main mission the second time. Fix the issue making it possible to destroy the fuse box before raising the shutter in the New York Federal Reserve side mission causing progress to be blocked. Fix the issue causing the interact with a door lock weird after responding during the stranded tanker main mission. Yes, technically this is a weird door. Fix the mission interaction highlighting on a prop blocking the way during the pathway park main mission. Fix the issue causing too few rogue agents to be spawned for plus four player group in the stranded tanker mission. Fix the issue causing the error mission outside playable area to appear when playing when against sandbox crops in the city city hall side mission. Excuse me. Fix the issue causing the Razorback generator hacking to not start when a player is inside the radius before it activates during the Liberty Island main mission. Fix the issue causing the objective meet with Faye and Rhodes to not update after a Delta disconnect during Cinemac during the City Hall side mission and also fix the issue causing players to not receive any damage from Airburst Seeker when sitting behind a specific cover piece during the Liberty Island main mission. Fix the issue causing player on PC and Stadia to become stuck after climbing a metal prop during the Pathway Park main mission when being in a two player group. Also fix the issue causing to uh, causing players to be unable to fast travel to a group member when that group member was in a classified assignment entrance. Also fix several issues with props in mission, fix collisions issues in missions, fix a number of cover issues and fix several occlusion issues. I'm not sure what that is. Next up, Operation Dark Hours. Fix the issue causing Razorbacks to not drop any subsequent keys after defeating it once. That happened to me. Also, under open world, fix the issue causing players to become stuck in a container after freeing the houses. Fix the issue causing black tusks to take over too many activities in New York. They also need some time to relax, but they was on the hustle for sure. Fix some weird stairs. Fix the issue causing players to be able to loot a weapon container through a wall. That sucks. That was cool. Fix the invisible loot crate. You will ask yourself if there ever was an invisible crate or not. 
fix several doors not opening when doing bounties. Fix the issue causing players to be unable to respond to Hunter and Connor when they die to it. Fix the issue causing players to be unable to open the door after taking the appropriate key for a Hunter encounter. Fix the issue causing NPCs to spawn from a manhole and then become stuck in a wall. Fix some lighting issues in the open world. Fix some issues with buildings. And fix occlusion issues in the open world. Dark Zone and PvP. We almost Dear ladies and gentlemen, fix the issue causing agent nameplates to be visible at incorrect distances. SHD agent nameplates are now visible at 15 meters. Rogue agent nameplates are now visible at 30 meters. And manhunt nameplates are now visible at 50 meters. These values can change depending on the dark zone perks. Fix several props and also fix the prop that could cause players to become stuck and immune when dropping from a certain location. Next up, vanity and store. Fix some animation errors when a player uses the Gunslinger emo, AI, and NPC. Fix the issue that could cause players to become immobilized by a riot form of enemy NPCs through cover. Fix several issues with enemy NPCs that would not shoot at the decoy. And last but not least, performance. Fix several issues causing low FPS in various side missions. Fix the streaming issue in Haven at the beginning of cinematics after the objective meet Faye and Rose. Fix the streaming issue players could encounter when streaming, excuse me, when starting at the Pathway Park main mission. And fix several streaming issues in the open world. And last but not least, fix several performance issues during the Operation Dark Hours raid. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a bit of patch notes, if I don't say so myself. Hopefully, the duct tape will fix these holes. A lot of stuff going on here, ladies and gentlemen. But, to be honest, the exotic changes are really, really nice. So, yeah, that's pretty much going to for the video, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I hope you truly enjoyed it. Now, as always, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you really want to help out the channel in the video and help this community grow, you can do so by liking the video if you indeed like the video and leaving a comment down below. I answer all of your questions, so if you have any, hit me up and I'll get to you back as soon as possible. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And as always, I'll be seeing y'all in the next one. Later.